Let us go through some non-chemical methods of weed control first. Like any other plant, weed also prepares food for itself. Hence, it adds humus to the soil if it is incorporated in the soil. Weed plays an important role in soil and water conservation. Touch-me-not, cassia and many other leguminous weeds have root nodules with nitrogen storage to enrich soil fertility. Chopping of the weed is popular in recent years instead of uprooting. Weed cutting machines are popular for this purpose. If the space is less between crop rows to operate brush cutters, we may use small rotary tillers for intercultivation. Cover crops or mulching is helpful in gardens for weed control. In wide open fields, irrigate once before sowing. Plough the land after the germination of weed seeds. This farmer uses simple equipment for paddy weeding. Small cage wheel is attached to the brush cutter itself for the purpose. Apart from weeding, this operation helps for better tillering. Flood irrigation encourages weed growth in gardens. But drip irrigation minimizes weed growth. Panama wilt of banana spreads with flood irrigation water. But drip irrigation checks this problem. It is advised to grow crops and varieties adapted to the local conditions. Hybrids can give higher yield under favorable conditions. But it fails with adverse climatic situations. The farmer has to spend every time to purchase hybrid seeds. Generally, commercial hybrids have less resistance against pests and diseases. Hence, the spending on fertilizers and pesticides is more. But the local varieties are available with the farmers with less cost. Use of these varieties enriches crop and varietal diversity. Varieties respond well to organic farming and can face adverse climatic conditions. Pest and disease problem is also less. There are varieties with resistance or tolerance against specific disease or insect. For example, we have tomato variety resistance to bacterial wilt. by adjusting sowing or planting time. Crop rotation is also an important practice. Repeated growing of any crop will lead to the buildup of pest and disease and deficiency of micronutrients. Crop rotation with different types of crops will minimize these problems. This improves the health and sturdiness of the crop, minimizing pest and disease problem. Leguminous crops in the crop rotation cycle enrich soil fertility benefiting the monocot crop of the next season. Intercropping and mixed cropping systems are also useful to bring down pest and disease problems. Most of the insects pupate in the soil after the harvest of a crop. Adults emerge by the next cropping season. Hence, summer ploughing exposes the pupa to direct sun and predators. Even the pathogens get destroyed by direct hot sun. Thus, summer ploughing helps a lot for pest and disease control. Solarization is another effective method of pest and disease management. Cover the seabed or planting site tightly with transparent plastic sheet for 8 weeks. It is most effective in hot summer if the soil has enough moisture. Heat collected beneath the poly sheet destroys root knot nematodes, soil-borne pathogenic fungi, insects and weeds. In this areca garden, bunches are covered with poly cover to avoid choleroga of areca nut. This is a popular and effective method in heavy rainfall areas. Preventing pest and disease is our priority in organic farming. Follow recommended spacing for crops and varieties. Light penetration and free movement of air between rows and plants of crop will keep the pests away. This is the reason for healthy growth of paddy 
in SRI method. Uproot excess plants after germination to maintain optimum plant population. This allows remaining plants to grow healthy and sturdy. Vegetables like bitter gourd, rich gourd, tomato, etc. are tied upright with thread. This avoids the contact of leaves and fruits with the soil, minimizing soil-borne infection. Mulching is given importance in organic farming. It is helpful for soil and water conservation. It is also useful for pest and disease management. Mulching avoids splashing of pathogens with rainwater from soil to the upper portion of plants. This is followed in black pepper for the control of wilt disease. Silver-colored shining plastic mulch repels aphids by reflection of light. This method minimizes the spreading of mosaic disease of watermelon and wilt disease of tomato and chili. Preventing the entry of vector insects avoids many diseases in vegetable nurseries. Nylon nets are used for this purpose. It is possible to pick and kill larvae and other insects in kitchen gardens. Kill the pest by putting it in kerosene in a poly bag. Sticky trap is one of the methods of integrated pest management. Paint metal plate or tin with yellow color and apply grease or castor oil on it. Put this yellow sticky trap in the field. White flies and aphids of brinjal, tomato and cotton are attracted to this trap. Insects get trapped on the sticky surface and die. Likewise, violet color attracts thrips and lice. Clean the trap once in two to three days and apply the sticky substance again. Adult insects get attracted to the lamp in dark hours. Fill water in an earthen vessel with wide mouth and put a little bit of kerosene. Keep the vessel below the bulb. Glow an incandescent bulb in the field from 6 to 9 p.m. Insect attracted to the bulb die by falling into the water. Switch off the light by 9 p.m. Otherwise, some useful insects will also die. Paddy case worm is common if the transplanting is delayed. In Western Ghat region, there is a traditional method for the control of this case worm. Twig of Mukadaka or Gnidia glauca plant, which has insecticidal property, is swinged like this to open the case of the worm. Some farmers use the twigs with sharp thorns or coconut leaf broom instead of Gnidia glauca plant. Stop water flowing in and flowing out before this work. Case worms fall down. Put a little amount of kerosene to a gunny bag and keep it in the water outlet. Then leave the stagnant water. Case worms moving with the flowing water die due to the kerosene. There is a traditional method for the control of ear head bugs of paddy. Burning bundle of wooden sticks is swinged just above the crop by 7 to 8 p.m. The bugs fly in the dark and die due to burning of wings. Another method of insect control is the use of pheromone trap. Pheromones are the biological substances released by female insects to attract the males. Pheromones are specific to each species of insects. These are artificially produced in the lab and supplied as lure. Traps fitted with lure are placed like this at 2 to 3 feet height above the crop. Five pheromone traps are enough for one acre. Male insects get attracted, trapped in the poly bag and die. This reduces the chance for mating and multiplication is cut to that extent. Originally, the pheromone trap is a system of vigilance on the pest population. Pheromone traps are popular for the control of helicorpa and sporoptera insects in cotton, sunflower and tomato, and stem borer and fruit borer in brinjal, etc. It is commercially used for the control of fruit flies in mango and other fruit crops also.
are seen in some fields. Otherwise, maize or okra plants are grown here and there. Birds sit on these perches and predate on the insects. 20 bird perches per acre can give considerable control of insect pests. However, bird damage is a major problem in some crops. Here, shining ribbons are tied to protect the seeds sown from the birds. This ribbon, tied to sorghum earhead, is also for the same purpose. Birds damage the pomegranate fruits in this garden. Cellular tapes are tied across to threaten the birds. Let us study the trap crop concept now. We find marigold plant rows around this cotton field. Moths of cotton ball worm are attracted to these flowers and lay eggs. Marigold flowers are plucked once in two to three days and destroyed. Likewise, okra and red drum are also used as trap crops in cotton. Marigold is helpful even in tomato. Apart from these, root exudates of marigold control soil nematodes. Hence, crop rotation with marigold in nematode affected fields can control nematode effectively. Castor is the trap crop for Sporoptera cutworms. Mustard plant is effective for diamond back moth of cabbage. Putting two to three rows of sorghum around chili crop acts as a physical barrier for the entry of the vector insect, aphid. Two rows of red gram and castor around the vegetable crop control most of the larvae.